We are currently floating, guys, 17,000 bucks on this S&P trade. This is a personal record for me in terms of a single trade. There's one trade in my history. Uh, does anybody know what my... I've talked about it on on streams and, and videos before, but I'll be I'll be uh, really impressed if anybody knows my best trade ever. Feel free to guess what it was. Um, it's not what you think. It's 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 kind of a insane 2020 trade. That's my hint. <clears throat> like a massive, insanely good trade in 2020. Anyways, let's take a look uh, at some setups. I'm still long S and P. Uh, nothing has changed really other than trailing my stop further into profit. For those of you guys who are familiar with my trading style, you know I like to trail stops. Has its pros and cons. And let me just dismiss the idea like, oh, I just need to start trailing my stops and I'll be able to trade like this. You have to understand, guys, I went through three months of drawdowns, lo losses, you know, small losses, losses, uh, small wins, break even trades to finally find this move. So let me be very clear. Uh, trailing stops are not the holy grail. Nothing really truly is, but I am still holding on to my S&P trade. And uh, today, again, we are at another decision point for the market as we near what is potentially going to be a little bit of resistance for the market to get over. Take a look left if you're watching the S&P 500 as well with me. Uh, many of you guys inside of the VIP group I know are riding this trend with me. It's been a monster mover for us inside of the Discord. And uh, just a heads up, if you're not inside of the Discord, um, that is that is where I share all of my trading signals. Uh, Frank, myself, and Ivan, of course, we share what we're doing, breakdowns on trades we're looking at, if that's something you're interested in. Want to stay up to date with all the latest trading information? In the description below, you'll find the link to join our free Discord. The Discord gives you instant access to lots of helpful material like free trading courses, chart analysis, updates about what's happening in the A1 community, as well as discount codes for our other products and services. The best part, all of this and more is 100% free. So go down in the description below this video and check it out for yourself. If you're interested in upgrading to the full VIP Discord featuring our team of expert traders signals, you can use the live chat link in the description to get connected with one of our team members in seconds. So don't wait, go check out the free Discord today producer price index headline and retail sales headline. Now, why, uh, why does this matter so much? Well, I'll tell you why it matters so much. Um, retail sales will get us an indication of how the consumer is feeling. And the producer price index is another measurement of inflation. It looks further up the supply chain at the producers. Now, how is that going to impact the trade? Well, yesterday we saw the dollar fall out of the sky and it was a wonderful thing to be held, uh, Behold, one of the things I'm 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 working on my uh, my speech and my vocabulary, guys. Bear with me. My goal is someday, who knows, maybe to be like a uh, an anchor on my own live stream, live stream or something like that. <laughs> I'm kidding, but anyways, um, dollar index fell out of the sky yesterday, and it was a beautiful breakout to the downside. And you know what we saw here is we saw a close that was outside of this key level of support. Honestly, it was really awesome to see because the dollar index has just been this upward pressure that's been holding the market by the throat. It's been the problem, right? The dollar index made itself very clear yesterday that it in fact was the problem, right? There were speculations about what, what the real thing holding the, the indices down, the whole thing, you know, what has been holding down the euro and the pound and S&P 500, what's been holding it down? Well, yesterday it became very evident to the market that it was the dollar. The dollar came down hard because, ready? Yields. Yields came down hard. What are you talking about, Nick? What the heck is a yield? Bonds, guys. If you're a currency trader, just a heads up, if you trade any USD pairs, you by proxy are somewhat of a bond trader as well because bonds and their yield have such an immense impact on what the dollar does, especially in the last year or so where it's just been front and center. Uh, bond yields very, very much matter. I don't know. Did anybody just realize that they became a bond trader? They, if you trade Forex, if you trade currencies, you may not have even realized by proxy, you're kind of a bond trader too, because yields have such an impact. Look at this. Visualize this. Here's the two year. Here's the dollar. See that? US two year dollar. Is it perfect? No, but it's pretty dang close and it's meaningfully correlated. PPI should be hitting the floor any second now. 
All right, and there goes the dollar down further. Initially popping lower here, uh, 104 printing. Of course, that is going to be, like I said, probably bullish for gold. Let's take a quick look at gold here. Um, so gold, yep, jumping up to 1974 as we speak. S&P 500 not moving too much, um, but we're going to take a look in just a second at the number um, to, to take a look at that. There's the there's the S&P trade um, still hanging in there, doing just fine. Again, that would probably suggest perhaps retail sales look fine. Let's take a look. So um, again, going to see if we're right about that. PPI and retail sales pending here in just a moment. All right. PPI came in. Oh, my goodness. PPI down what is that number? Okay, this confirms, more than confirms the cooling inflation number yesterday. That is a wonderfully low print. Retail sales uh, better than expected. This is another perfect round of data, I think. Hold on. Core retail sales. Um, okay, core retail sales better than expected. Uh, retail sales headline better than expected. PPI better than expected. Now, yes, lower than expected, but that's good in terms of the inflation story. We want that number to be low. Uh, if you're talking about risk assets, if you're someone who's bullish on, um, you know, stocks like myself, or if you are looking at gold, this would probably also help it out. Core PPI also cooler than expected. Okay, that is generally speaking a pretty dang good report. Now you can see the stock market not making too much of a difference. Gold is coming back down. Dollar is kind of normalizing. Here's your 30-minute chart view. Switch it over to the hourly chart. And again, um, interesting reaction so far. It's been a little bit mixed. Not a huge spike one way or another, guys, and, and that is worth noting. Yes, these are some, some volatile minute candles, but this is the one-minute chart. On a CPI day yesterday, you saw this thing just completely engulf the entire screen. You're not seeing that today. So you're seeing a little bit of a reaction. But again, let's digest these numbers for a second. What this is telling us here is you've got retail sales coming in um, better than expected. The consumer perhaps hanging in there a little bit better good for stocks um and and risk sentiment in general right uh so not necessarily great for gold right economic uh growth is not necessarily good for gold because gold sometimes will do really well when markets are fearful about the economy slowing down too much so we didn't get quite that so gold perhaps seeing a little bit of uh not favorable numbers there uh, but good for stocks because of course companies will do better when the retail sales numbers when when uh the the consumer is hanging in there right so empire state manufacturing the final one to talk about stronger than expected empire state manufacturing is of course uh indicates improving or worsening conditions on economic health related to businesses so again we're getting overall some decent economic numbers which would surprisingly you know it might be a little confusing at first but that would generally be on the more um bearish side for gold to have strong uh you know strong consumer strong economic figures uh so we're seeing a little bit of pullback in gold um still i, I think doesn't change the the overall direction for gold in my opinion so this actually might produce a nice pullback to consider in my opinion you know what you this might give you a little bit of a brief pullback but i think the bigger story is still inflation is cooling that dollar is going to likely in my opinion see further downside in the coming weeks and um that could lend to a nice, if this this might be a nice short-term pullback before gold uh, rallies higher. Now, of course, as always with these opinions, guys, these are opinions. I am not a market wizard. I'm not a market god. I don't know what the markets are going to do. I am doing best guesswork as any trader will do, right? Trading is not about knowing with certainties. It's about weighing probabilities and managing risk appropriately. What are your thoughts on taking the flip of the candle in NAS? Uh, Simon about NASDAQ. NASDAQ is going to be the same. It's going to sound the exact same to the dollar index concept I just talked about, but flipped in reverse. The dollar index, I'm saying, you know, wait for pullbacks and potentially be bearish, in my opinion. Well, NASDAQ, opposite. It's run, it's run really, really hot. It's probably due for some pullback. Um, I would short it, in my opinion, but a pullback could be an appropriate course of action in my opinion i keep saying in my opinion because i don't want somebody who's watching the stream who is you know not willing to put any work on this stuff i'm not here to be an atm or a signal service because here's the thing right um i get it wrong i'm not always right in the markets and 
new traders sometimes overestimate somebody they see on YouTube as this like guru who knows what the market's going to do. That's not me and that's not anybody else. Nobody knows with certainty what the market, think about how many variables go into moving price, so many things. And so as a trader, you're really being an educated guesser, right? You take in a lot of data, take into a lot of things into account, and you generate bullish or bearish signals like our software does. Now, I will say this, um, there are so many factors that go into the markets and why they go up or down. It is, in my opinion, in this day and age, it's imperative that you have data on your side and not just base everything based on purely technical charts. In my opinion, that is incredibly difficult to do. So many traders, they do not look at things like what the smart money is doing. Like, for example, we did a full breakdown yesterday. If you missed it, here's a quick rundown. We looked at the commitment of traders data, which shows us what institutional money is uh, buying or selling. It's a really, really important indicator. And um, I want to show you this because if you're somebody who's watched the, uh, the stream for a while, you may have seen this before, but this second section of this uh, chart is what really matters. Because what we can see here is that this is the latest buys and sells based on the commitment of traders data that comes out. So if you're asking about NASDAQ and you're saying, I think it's too high and I got to short it. Well, look what big money has done the latest filing. They bought more of it, right? Take a look, you know, consider things before you just jump in. You got to look at what big money has been doing. If you're looking at the Australian dollar, they've been buying the Australian dollar. Take a look at the pound, same thing. USD, slight buying as well, so a little bit of caution there, but not nearly as much as perhaps like the Australian dollar or the pound, right? So if you compared these two, clearly the Australian dollar and the pound are more bullish than just the dollar. And by the way, guys, I'm looking at this far right-hand column, which summarizes the entire net shift, bullish or bearish for institutional money, okay? So if you're looking at this on the other side, you've got like things like the Canadian dollar, the Kiwi, the SPX 500, which is a little concerning for my position. However, um, I'm kind of, I, there's some some other things that I'm looking at, like seasonal data, et cetera. Uh, the COT data is not the only thing that I pay attention to, but it's a nice confluence factor that a lot of traders who use our software, this is like the first thing they open up in their morning. I mean, we have a lot of people who, this is like their daily ritual is to keep a tab open for the commitment of traders data so they can get an idea of what's going on. However, there's some indications on here. There's a lot of new signals being generated by the edge finder right now. And I'd love to uh, go through a couple of these guys with you, keep you up to date. The only thing kind of holding me back on the edge, uh, the gold market is the, the edge finder's not quite giving us a reading. US 30, I want to just see, US 30 is getting a bullish reading here on the edge finder. So perhaps a pullback if would be an interesting setup for US 30 and NAS. GBP, JPY, we'll take a look at this one. Let's see what GJ is doing. GJ, I pointed this one out. This would be an interesting one for me if we got a deeper pullback. So GJ is on the watch list as well. Um, let's see, CHF, JPY. Yeah, that one is going to be hard for me because that one's already just squeezing higher here as we speak back to the highs. What a move on the yen pairs, guys. For those of you guys trading the yens, uh, my goodness. What about Australian dollar, Japanese yen? Let's see. The Australian dollar against the Japanese yen. Really interesting here. Big pop as well. I think this could be interesting if you get a pullback to like the 50% for possible bull setups. So we'll keep an eye on that. German 30, Euro CAD, Kiwi CAD, Bitcoin. What's going on with Bitcoin? Bitcoin. 36,102 right now. Let's see what else is going on. Euro CAD, NZD CAD, Euro CAD. What's going on with Euro CAD? Euro CAD daily chart, actually kind of a clean technical setup. Again, kind of in limbo. This is kind of an interesting time in the markets where it's like a lot of things look good, but they've made big runs. So it gives you this like, okay, I need to wait for pullback scenario. But the cool thing is at least there's a lot of like 
there's a lot of potential setups. Aussie CAD, I know one of my content creator friends, Dan Emerson, he is an edge finder user and he is long Aussie CAD. So congrats to him. Um, yeah, I like, I do really like Aussie CAD to the long side, but for me, what it would have to be is let's see if we can get a pop above this, like a breakout retest kind of concept or some sort of a bigger pullback. Longs on CAD Swiss. I think I'm on the opposite side on that. I think CAD Swiss more bearish than anything. Yeah, see, this market looks to me pretty dang bearish. And you may ask why, what, what, what is so bearish about this? Well, I'm kind of bearish oil. The economy is kind of expected to slow down. So demand concerns could kind of become a thing for oil traders out there. Does that have to do with CAD Swiss? A lot. Because if oil comes down and CAD Swiss, the Canadian economy is heavily reliant on the price of, of crude oil in order and, and you know their economy is based around it so weakening oil can weaken the cad and that's kind of the story that we're seeing right now fundamentally i think that could be set to continue as economies around the world do slow down it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going into massive recession i'm just saying a slowdown from all the rate rate hikes and uh, you know monetary policy tightening could be doing some work on this. Don't forget to check out the links in the description if you want our broker recommendation, access to our free Discord, free Edge Finder, or want to chat with us on Telegram. Remember, you can watch us live in the markets every morning starting at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and we have lots more free trading tools and content available on our website, a1trading.com. Thanks for watching.